Hey, it's Cameron Reynolds. It's a gorgeous spring day. Getting some spring showers, but that makes you know all those wonderful flowers that the bees love, and they're really going at it. Let's check out this horizontal hive. I'm anxious to see how they're doing. I haven't checked them um, as an inspection since we installed them in spring is here. It is just gorgeous. Everything's starting to leaf out really nice. The oaks are producing a lot of pollens and the hickories had their catkins producing pollens right now. We got a tiny frost but I don't think it did any major damage I hope. So let's get in here and see what's going on. Plus I've got the inner covers down here um, that we need to make sure that they don't burr the lid down to the frames and that's that's the problem right there. I'll show you. It might have, may have already burned it up a little bit anyways. <laughs> Maybe they already have. And that's... There we go. We're just going to give them some puffs of smoke. Just kind of let that go around just a little bit. It's going to encourage the bees to eat that honey and fill up and also mainly block their communication. Yes, look at that right there. Wowee. So this is why you use the inner covers. So we're going to have to scrape all this off. And oh my goodness, I'm going to have to get the bees off of here. It also prevents this from happening. We've got some crushed bees down in here and there's no way that you can completely eliminate this a lot of people have asked me well how do I keep bees without crushing any ever and that's it's really impossible even if you can't see it you're doing it when you're pulling frames out at a slight angle maybe there's drone come at the bottom it's really unfortunate but it is part of it keep in mind that there are things all throughout the countryside that are chipping away at the percentages of the bee and the way I look at it, we're the only thing that may accidentally cause a little collateral damage, but overall, when we're doing what we're supposed to, we're helping our bees out, helping them have higher chances of survival, higher chances of reproducing and making an increase, all of that stuff. All right, so looks like the bees are about from here to over here. And I'm going to have a lot of scraping to do. And I'm going to need to get a bee brush probably for, for this right here. We, You never know. The queen literally could be up in here laying in this burr comb up top. And she, you know, that's pretty much all drone comb right there. You can see right in here, look at those nice eggs right in there that she has laid. So definitely need to watch out for the queen up in there. I'm gonna go get a bee brush. I hate using a bee brush. Usually I only use it for queen cells when they're, it's a very delicate situation, but here we go. So it's after a long hunt, found my bee brush. They're, they have legs, all these tools have invisible legs. So I've, with Laurel's suggestion, put two boards right here to prevent any from falling down the cracks and hopefully make it a lot easier to get these bees down in the hive. It's important though we get all this really good and that's the reason why you know a lot of people are like why don't you have inner covers Cayman well I've got a di I use a different type of lid migratory lids are different they will tie them down to a degree but the spacing is different the telescoping cover since it's covered on all four sides it's hard to pry it Ooh, look at the baskets on that but Inner covers kind of take the place of having to pry on your main cover. So on this frame out here, it feels mostly empty. 
mostly empty. I need to put a couple more frames in here, fill this space out. And this is bee bread, food, and lots of drones. I'm curious to see where the brood nest starts. Well, here's a little bit of capped brood. There's some larvae down in there. Not a lot. It's uh, pretty spotty. Yeah, there's just a, a mixed bit on this frame as well. Interested to find out what we have over here. There we go. There we have a nice pattern. Old comb right there. There we go. Nice pattern. So this starts the brood frame. I want to just kind of go in the center, see how we're doing swarm wise. I'm considering moving this colony to a different yard. This yard doesn't produce that much honey for us. And in a good year, it can, it can still do pretty good. Seen a lot of eggs down in there, capped brood. Boy, it's getting windy. And just more of the same, capped brood, drone brood, eggs, nice bee bread. Now one thing I will say is I'll show you the inner covers here in a bit and how they work. They're really handy for multiple reasons. There's three of them. More cat brood, more bee bread. Oh, there's the queen. I don't see any signs of wanting to swarm. I'm going to check a couple more frames just because I want to. If I was just doing a, ra a random inspection, this would be plenty. They have food. It's a good time of the year. They're bringing in pollen. The nectar, once we get some more sunny days, especially if we can get up in the 80s, the nectar will start pouring in. Blackberries, not blooming yet, but whenever the blackberry starts going, it's really on. If you can get some good sunny days on that. So, yeah, there's just a, a mix, a bunch of everything. Just bee bread all in here. It just, uh, I think one of the reasons why I like single brood management is that it's, they're, they're a little more uniform. Once they commit, the brood's like in a really tight group of frames and you end up with more sheets of brood. We'll try to show you some of our regular colonies like that, but again, mixed stages here. She's just going through and just laying up whatever she can find and just moving right along. Probably pretty good though for swarm management because she really keeps in laying room. Kind of like having double deeps, but uh, long ways. But yeah, tons of calf brood in here. This hive should be exploding pretty soon. I haven't seen a ton of larvae though, which makes me wonder if there's a bunch over in here. I'm gonna jump over to this frame here in a second, right after this one. Wow. Yeah, so you know, there's some calf brood. I am seeing larvae down in here. Let me flip this over. You can just see larvae down in there. And then there's eggs all the way towards the top right corner of this frame. There's eggs. You can't see good because of the yellow foundation. It's one of the cons with the yellow foundation is, uh, it is really hard to see stuff down in there. You can. Let's jump on over here. 
But I would love to see this colony over the course of our honey flow fill up this entire section full of honey. And they may do it. We'll have to see. Uh-oh, it's starting to sprinkle. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so they're starting to cap this brood. She just has such a good amount of space right now to lay. She's just going through and finding the nearest thing and laying it up and moving on instead of staying in one area. Mixed age of larvae and stuff as well here. Looking really good. This, this colony is fixing to explode. So we are going to smoke those bees down. And the reason I'm shaking those frames, it's not necessary, it's mainly just so you can see it. Ooh, that rain is cold. I'm sure the bee, these bees are loving it. They can handle it. We'll scoot all these back over. This is really important. Now let's handle these inner covers really quick. So I want to get all this up if I can too. That's pretty good right there. I and mean, we could we could get fancier, but that'll that'll do a good good enough job right there. And we've got three of them. Ricky likes to put these screens up here so you can't get small hive beetles up top hiding, which is uh, good. And we are going to take these out here. Woohoo! About bought the farm on that one. I don't know why we say that. Move to the city. That about move to the city there. That's I think that's more accurate. All right, let's get these bees in. Get down in there, girls. Yeah. All right, so these are notched inner covers. That notch right there. And they just fit right down in here beautifully. And this is awesome for multiple reasons. Is, you know, these bees right here can kind of go about their business. Or what if... I wanted to only pull from the honey today. Hopefully we'll have that in the video soon and we'll have this all chock full of honey and we'll be pulling frames from over here and literally we can keep these on just like this and those bees are kind of chilling out, don't even know we're around hardly and we're just kind of pulling from where we want to or maybe we don't want to get into the honey supers, vice versa. So now we can kind of just focus on each section also helps keep that heat in just a little bit more so um thanks again ricky for sending this so we can see what's going on um i had a lot of people comment in the last video saying that it needed an inner cover of some sort and uh i forgot about that i don't really use inner covers and have it for years but uh i'm getting back in the swing of things anyways fun fun hive. I'm anxious to see how they work. I think they'll work just fine, but we'll see. I'm excited to see the honey crop. Hopefully it'll be good. And then also excited to see mite control and overwintering and maybe sticking a divider down in here, getting an entrance over there, entrance over there, divider, divider, one, two, three hives going through winter. That would be pretty sweet. Thanks for watching the videos.